The deadliest combat mission in President Trump's tenure is shrouded in mystery. We deserve answers, not just about the four American soldiers who died in Niger, but about the wider U.S. involvement in Africa. Confused? Let me help. When U.S. Special Forces set out for the Niger-Mali border in early October, officials said they were on a routine training mission. It was supposed to be low risk. Turns out, it wasn't. Four American Green Berets and five Nigerian soldiers died in an ambush. Officials are blaming a militant group new to the area. Trump is usually quick to condemn Islamist terrorism, but he didn't mention this attack for two weeks. And the only reason it's making headlines now is because Trump lashed out at critics who said he politicized his condolence calls. The silver lining in this tragedy is that the Pentagon is finally being asked to explain what happened. And the FBI says it will look into the deaths. But let's focus on the bigger issue. Africa hosts the second largest deployment of U.S. Special Operations Forces after the Middle East. And even Congress isn't sure what exactly they're doing there. At least 1,700 American troops are in nearly 30 African countries. We think at least 800 of them are assigned to posts in Niger. Another 300 are in Cameroon. Military officials won't specify how many of those are elite forces. But we do know that in 2010, only 3% of special commandos were deployed to Africa. By 2016, that had jumped to 17%. And among that buildup were the four Green Berets who died in Niger. Senator John McCain is threatening to subpoena the Trump administration if it doesn't reveal more about the attack. Lawmakers are demanding to know more about military operations in general. A little history here. U.S. forces arrived in Niger in 2013. President Barack Obama sent them to support the French military, which was ousting extremists taking over Mali, just right next door. After that, the militants regrouped in the desert, and the U.S. military turned Niger into an operational hub for the region. America has two drone bases there, and they run surveillance across the Sahel region, from Mali to southern Libya, spying on ISIS and groups linked to Al-Qaeda. U.S. drones are also flying out of Cameroon, and they're watching Boko Haram from the sky. On the ground, U.S. forces are in eastern Africa, fighting Al-Shabaab in Somalia. But in less than a decade, the U.S. militarization of Africa has put troops on every corner of the continent. American taxpayers are spending billions. Yet as the U.S. military expands its presence, U.S. diplomacy is lagging behind. The State Department is overseeing a disjointed policy. Case in point, Chad was one of our closest and most capable allies in the fight against terrorism. Yet Trump just slapped it with a travel ban. And as a result, the country is scaling back its partnership. Trump inherited America's militarization of Africa, and he now has an opportunity to rethink what works and what doesn't. For now, we need answers about the four U.S. soldiers who lost their lives in Niger. But in the long run, we need transparency and accountability in U.S. military operations across the continent. The security of Africans and Americans depends on it.